Yesterday there was something in the news on Israel365.com that I thought was very significant and I thought I would share it. And partly because I talked about the holy half shekel in my book, The Almond Tree, Aaron's Rod, The Messiah, King of Israel. And I showed how um, they had, for the first time in 2,000 years, they had reminted the holy half shekel. And that was the coin that in the courtyard of the temple, they had these big jars that were shaped like horns, like a musical horn. And the people would come up to the temple and they would give the half shekel, drop it in the horn, and you could hear it clank at the bottom. So the holy half shekel, as it was called, was to provide money for anything pertaining to the temple. It was basically considered your offering and tithe to God. At the time that it was minted, they had several designs of the holy half shekel that they were making and one of the ones that I really liked and have photographed from my book it is the holy half shekel that has Mount Sinai on it and I believe it was on the reverse it has the hands of God with the the pillar of fire going up or the pillar of cloud going up and it had the walls of Jerusalem around it so it was kind of like a square of the walls of Jerusalem and then that half shekel coin was in the middle of it and that was kind of like early on when they first were minting them a few years ago and so I had taken a picture and put it in my book. Um, of course, it's in black and white, but they made it with the walls being gold and the coin in the center was silver. So I'm bringing this up because one of the latest ones that they made, as you know, is the Donald Trump Cyrus half shekel coin. That is the half shekel temple coin and it has Cyrus's profile against Donald Trump's profile. Then we had this coin that had the menorah on it to fulfill 70 years. There's the lion and it says, and he charged me to build him a house in Jerusalem and we had the temple on the other side of the coin like doves to their nest from Isaiah showing the third temple now I believe this coin was a bigger coin that it was not the holy half shekel coin when I just showed this 70 year redemption coin with Trump and Cyrus kind of a messianic figure I guess you'd say just like Moses was kind of a messianic figure and um, anyway I wanted to point out also that the eagle is over there on the right hand side and of course the lion stands for the lion of the tribe of Judah and I don't know if you ever saw this picture before and of course we saw the Abraham Accord coin they also have a King David gold-plated coin. But this is the one I wanted to point out mostly because this is the Donald Trump Cyrus half shekel temple coin. And I'm going to mention why this could be important and significant. So this is the other side of the Trump Cyrus half shekel temple coin showing the third temple the one that's given at the temple and I'm showing this to you for a reason because there's been some developments now I'm showing this to you because this article just came up yesterday in Israel 365 about 
a rabbi making a suggestion about the holy half shekel coin. But a while back, let's see, this was March 10th, 2019, reported from the hill.com. Trump was joking around and he says that he'd poll at 98% if he ran to be Israel's prime minister. And of course, he was just joking. But of course it made the news and whether he could really run or not for the Prime Minister of Israel is something I don't really know. I don't have all the facts about that. But he's very popular over in Israel and very interesting that they said that he was preparing the way for the Messiah to arrive. They also stated, and I want to make this very clear, that they said that he's not the Messiah, but he is paving the way so the Messiah will be returning soon. I'm going to also show you the holy half shekel that's pictured in my book, and it was the Walls of Jerusalem coin. So things are progressing with the holy half shekel coin, because yesterday it was reported in Israel 365 News, that Jerusalem rabbi calls on 70 nations to organize and establish half shekel as world reserve currency. Wow! And this of course was written by Adam Eliyahu Berkowitz February 16th 2021 and they quote Haggai 2.8 silver is mine gold is mine says the Lord of hosts. So let me just read this article to tell you what they're suggesting. And I don't believe it's just one rabbi. I believe this is the goal of the Sanhedrin members and that they're just saying it's one rabbi that's suggesting this. But it says, as the world economy teeters, massive global unemployment and systems of government crumble, precious metals soar in price alongside ballooning cryptocurrencies. One rabbi suggests the solution is to be found in a temple-based commandment that stabilized the economy and the kingdom while bringing people to serve God. Rabbi Hillel Weiss, the former spokesman for the Sanhedrin, is planning on releasing a new coin dedicated to the establishment of the Davidic dynasty and the rebuilding of the Jewish temple in Jerusalem. The coin is intended to be more than a symbolic gesture. You bet it is. Man, I have the chills just running through me hearing that. And it, I really think it's so incredibly profound because when God gave me the title for my book, it has a subtitle that says the Davidic dynasty returns. And so reading the words of this coin is going to be dedicated to the establishment of the Davidic dynasty and the rebuilding of the Jewish temple in Jerusalem is like wow you know we know what the prophecy is as far as Israel goes but also the prophecy of the church believing in Messiah Yeshua so he's the Davidic dynasty returning so it goes on to say, many basic systems that are essential to society are, are disintegrating, Rabbi Wise told Israel 365 News. Many governments, including the U.S. and Israel, are having a crisis in government. At the same time, we are seeing basic issues in the very concept of money. Rabbi Weiss emphasized that the full economic efforts of the global pandemic have yet to be seen. The global markets for precious metals are off the charts, Rabbi Weiss said. Throughout history, governments issued coins to establish their sovereignty and to mark the passage of an era. It is a well-known axiom in finance that when faith in the government weakens, the value of the currency goes down and the value of precious metals rises. What we are seeing is that the trust in governments is failing, and this necessarily has a negative impact on the value of the currency. Rabbi Weiss emphasized that the solution to both the failing economy and lack of faith in governments was the same, the reestablishment of the Davidic dynasty based 
in the temple in Jerusalem. Wow, I have the shivers. Some people believe that God is above economics and has no dealings with money, Rabbi Weiss said, but this is not true. He cited that verse from Haggai to prove his point. The connection between the temple and currency was manifested through the biblical mandate of the half shekel. Every male over the age of 20 contributed to the temple. Regardless of personal wealth, every Jewish man was required each year to give a half shekel weight of pure silver in the form of a coin to the temple. Everyone who is numbered from 20 years old and over shall give the contribution to the Lord. The rich shall not pay more and the poor shall not pay less than the half shekel when you give the contribution to the Lord to make atonement for yourselves. He quotes Exodus 30, 15 there. In biblical terms, currency must be based on actual value, Rabbi Weiss said. If the currency does not have any connection to anything of value, then the entire world turns into a virtual concept like the stock market, but even worse, more like gambling. Every time you use money, its value will be fluid and random. For this reason, coins were made of precious metals and even paper currency was, until not so long ago, based on actual gold that was in possession of the government. The gold standard was widely used in the 19th and early part of the 20th century. Most nations abandoned the gold standard as the basis of their monetary systems at some point in the 20th century, although many still hold substantial gold reserves. We need to reestablish a universal basis for currency, Rabbi Weiss suggested. In ancient Israel, this was done through the temple and the silver that it received. This should have been carried out by the United Nations, but that organization failed in its biblical mandate by rejecting the Bible. Rabbi Weiss suggested that an organization of 70 nations based in Jerusalem and located with the Davidic dynasty would reestablish faith in governments and stabilize the economy. So see, that's the Sanhedrin talking there. They have been trying to get the 70 nations to participate and to come there to the Temple Mount, and they really want to replace the United Nations and have that building that I saw the blueprints of when Rabbi Richmond came here. I saw the blueprints for the Sanhedrin building where they're going to sit with all the representatives of all the nations. They're just continuing to make these suggestions all the time. But that is really incredibly chilling that they're saying that the 70 nations have to come to Jerusalem and be associated with the Davidic dynasty. <laughs> wow. Can you say that at some point, Jesus is coming, Yeshua is coming to reign there in Jerusalem. Rabbi Weiss referred to the massive inflation of Bitcoin. At its inception in 2009, the first Bitcoin transaction involved the purchase of two pizzas for 10,000 Bitcoins. The current rate has a single Bitcoin worth almost $50,000. Rabbi Weiss also referred to the recent crisis concerning the short squeeze of GameStop stocks. The group of people was able to manipulate the price of the stock, Rabbi Weiss said. If a country's economy is not based in any real value, another government with substantial economic clout, for example, China could destroy another country's economy if it is not based on anything of real value or real world value. An organization of 70 nations based in Jerusalem, based in the half shekel, connected to the Davidic dynasty would absolutely prevent this. This is really setting things up, believe me. Following this principle, the Sanhedrin first began minting coins in 2018, with the initial effort being a coin bearing the images of President Trump and Persian King Cyrus, the flip side featured a stylized image of the Third Temple. 
The response exceeded all their expectations, and thousands of coins were sold around the world. They followed the first coin up the next year by minting a gold coin honoring King David. That's the one I showed you. In temple times, the value of silver was emphasized every year when the nation began to give the half shekel on the 15th day of the Hebrew month of Adar at collection tables around the country. It falls on February 27th this year, 2021. On the 25th of the month, tables would be set up in Jerusalem for collecting the half shekel. When the Jews were set free of slavery in Egypt, God ensured that freedom by establishing the mitzvah, or Torah commandment, of the silver half shekel. Rabbi Weiss said reestablishing a temple-based silver standard can ensure that the nations of the world remain free. Think of this in prophetic terms. I hope you're prophetically shocked. <laughs> because uh, this has never happened in the history of the world. The half shekels funded the costs of the temple service. It was also required in order for public offerings to be considered communal since every Jewish household had contributed towards its purchase. A renowned Torah scholar from the Middle Ages who is more famously known as the Rambam said that the weight of the coin was equal to 160 grams of barley, which in modern measurements would be approximately 8 grams of silver. The value of the coin is dependent upon whatever the market's value is on silver. The return to a biblical silver standard may bear an additional benefit. It was precisely the silver half shekel that prevented a plague from engulfing Israel. <laughs> Exodus 30 verse 12. When you take a census of Benai Israel according to their enrollment, each shall pay Hashem a ransom for himself on being enrolled that no plague may come upon them through their being enrolled. King David forgot this prohibition and counted the Jews directly, resulting in a plague that killed some 70,000 Jews. And David built there an altar to Hashem and sacrificed burnt offerings and offerings of well-being. Hashem responded to the plea for the land, and the plague against Israel was checked. 2 Samuel 24:25. So what they're trying to do is to make all the nations come there to Jerusalem so they can be the governing body of the world and have this silver standard of the holy half shekel coin given to the temple. And this reminds me actually of Ezekiel 7 verse 19. And I'm just going to read the first version that comes up here, which is the NIV. I usually read King James, but it says, They will throw their silver into the streets, and their gold will be treated as a thing unclean. Their silver and gold will not be able to deliver them in the day of the Lord's wrath. It will not satisfy their hunger or fill their stomachs, for it has caused them to stumble into sin. So that's exactly what Ezekiel prophesied in chapter 7, verse 19. Let me just read the JPS Tanakh 1917 version of that scripture. They shall cast their silver in the streets, and their gold shall be as an unclean thing. Their silver and their gold shall not be able to deliver them in the day of the wrath of the Lord. They shall not satisfy their souls, neither fill their bowels, because it hath been the stumbling block of their iniquity. So, is God for this or against this? <laughs> Let me read the scriptures that are before that verse and after that verse, because they were important. It says, They will put on sackcloth, and terror will overwhelm them. Shame will cover all their faces, and all their heads will be shaved. They will throw their silver into the streets, and their gold will seem unclean. Their silver and gold cannot save them in the day of the wrath of the Lord. They cannot satisfy 
their appetites or fill their stomachs with wealth, for it became a stumbling block that brought their iniquity. His beautiful ornaments they transformed into pride and used them to fashion their vile images and detestable idols. Therefore, I will make these into something unclean for them. Not my words, but words of the prophet Isaiah. Now, of course, the scripture could have been referring to why God allowed the temple of Solomon to be destroyed in the first place, and they were exiled there to Babylon. So, in the last days, we have mystery, Babylon the Great. Think about it. Who went to Babylon? Who returned from Babylon? And what's going to be the end time Babylon? And please don't write me and say America. <laughs> now I'm going to show you the holy half shekel coin that I got, but it was minted by BegedEvery.com. And that was when they first started reproducing the half shekel for you know, hoping t that they would build the third temple and then they would have the half shekel again. Um, they're a different group than the Sanhedrin, but the historic overview that they have on their website, it says that the half shekel was introduced by Moses in 1289 BCE, reintroduced by King Yoash in 800 BCE, halted by Nebuchadnezzar, in 586 BCE, reintroduced by Nehemiah in 445 BCE, halted by Titus 70 CE, banned by Hadrian in 135 CE, reintroduced after 1,863 years in 1998. And so they say that the half shekel is a Torah commandment first introduced by Moses in 1289 BCE to the book of Exodus chapter 30 verses 11 through 16. Now this Big Ed Every website says the half shekel is the ultimate manifestation of the equality of every Jew, the end of disunity, the beginning of redemption. And when a certain person just got into the office of the presidency, what was the main term being used all over the internet, and that was the word unity. And so you can see how all of these things are being set into place so they can bring it all forth and cause everything that they want to happen to come about. So I'm going to leave this holy half shekel site which is israelvisit.co.il I'm going to leave it in the description box for you so you can look at the different years the holy half shekel that they created so they actually started the restoration of the minting of the holy half shekel for the temple it says in 1998 so they've been minting these half shekel coins with different designs on them minted on the metal of the coin. And the Trump Cyrus coin was just one that was minted by the Sanhedrin. So really it's quite interesting if you put everything together, including what I told you about, that they're going to build that train station directly adjacent from, I believe it's the Western Wall. And somebody told me that they are doing construction there and asked me what it was. And I believe it's the train station, which they said that they were going to name it after Donald J. Trump. And so it will take people directly from Ben Gurion Airport on the train. Then the train will go all the way up the tracks, all the way from the airport, and take you up to the Temple Mount and drop you off right there so you can go up and worship God on Holy Mount Moriah. And now the Sanhedrin, I believe, they are the ones saying that they want the holy half shekel to be the world standard. Instead of regular gold and silver, they want it to be the holy half shekel for the third temple. And to have it be the worldwide standard so that it will back up 
the world currency and make the Davidic dynasty the forefront of coming to worship God on Holy Mount Moriah. If that doesn't give you the chills, I don't know what does. Now, there's an element of this group that we know is not for the Christian believers. And remember what I told you that the Sanhedrin is the one who has to declare the Messiah. They will announce the name of their Messiah to Israel. And then that makes every Jew obligated to have to follow that man that they proclaim is the Messiah of Israel. And of course, we already know that most of the people, a lot of Jews have already accepted Yeshua is the Messiah and they can see that clearly but there's another element of people that have not accepted that Yeshua is the Messiah of Israel even though their own Rabbi Kaduri gave that name as the Messiah that he apparently encountered in a vision. Ultimately this would be putting the Sanhedrin members as the world court, the world governing body. And we know what the Bible says about the last days and what is to come. But those who have given their life to Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach of Nazareth, it says that we are not destined for the wrath to come, but we've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb taken out of the hands of the enemy and placed into the hands of God. So when they give this worldwide Jewish prayer right before Purim, all over the world, asking for the Messiah to reveal himself and to reveal his name, is it possible that they're going to name the person at that point? But we are also at the same time asking the Lord Jesus, Yeshua, to appear, to take us to be where he is like he promised in the blessed hope. And we're praying for the soon rapture of the church, the bride of Christ, the Gentiles that God took out from amongst the nations that believe in him as king, king of kings and lord of lords. And so that's going to be interesting to see how all of this is falling into place on top of Rabbi Yehuda Glick running for the office of the President of Israel and he is the forefront person who wants the Holy Temple to be built in Jerusalem and the sacrifices to begin just like it says that they will be in the book of Revelation some of the designs of the holy half shekel have included grapes a cluster of grapes and included the harp of king david and mount sinai one of the holy half shekel coins is showing and depicting the priests up there giving the burnt offering on the altar the very fact that they would even put one of our president's images on the holy half shekel coin or one of the designs especially minted by the Sanhedrin is extremely telling of what they're thinking. These are pictures in my book of course. I'm on page 181. This is another regular shekel coin. This right here is a shekel coin from Israel. It's one of my favorites that was minted. It's not a half shekel, but I just love that. I mean, it reminds me of the Sea of Galilee ship that the apostles were on. Israel had an extended fishing industry. And here's another shekel coin with the harp of David on it. And then I want to get to the next coin. Now this is the coin by Big Ed Avery and it was minted apparently sometime around 2014 but it is called the Walls of Jerusalem coin and they were actually going to use the money and proceeds from it 
to help build up the walls. So this is the reverse of that harp holy half shekel coin. And this shows the walls of Jerusalem. It's showing Mount Sinai and the pillar of cloud going up and the priest's hands reaching up to heaven. And he's making the priestly hand, you know, they split their fingers like this when they would pray like that. And that's what they're doing in the coin here. So this is on page 182 of my book, The Almond Tree, Aaron's Rod, the Messiah King of Israel. And that is a holy half shekel coin. The Davidic dynasty returns. God had me write that on my book as the subtitle. And now they're talking about establishing the holy half shekel as the standard for the world and establishing the Davidic dynasty. So with that stunning news, that should tell you that we're moving closer and closer to the time of the return and the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach of Nazareth, the Messiah of Israel, the King of the Davidic dynasty, and it's returning. And they are trying to set it up, but hopefully God will open their eyes to see the true Messiah and Yeshua HaMashiach of Nazareth. And when I said that the Jews are all praying all worldwide next Sunday, February 21st, for the Messiah to reveal himself and to let his name be known, I was saying that we as believers should be praying to see Yeshua appearing and to proclaim his name because we already know what his name is. And it's right there in the book of Isaiah. God has become my Yeshua. God is my Yeshua. He's my salvation. He's my redeemer. And Israel wants the redemption to come. So they should say, Baruch haba Hashem Adonai, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. May the King appear in glory as soon as possible. I hope you enjoyed this video and it was informing. I will put everything, the links, in the description box so you can see them. And thank you for blessing this channel. Thank you for continuing to support it. And you can get my book at olivepresspublisher.com. If you liked what you saw there in the pictures, a lot of work and love went into that project for eight years, and I didn't make a dime on it. So I'm just saying that it should be blessing everybody revealing the Messiah for the last days. And I hope you enjoyed this segment of the prophetic events that are literally coming alive before our eyes. Jesus is coming soon. Yeshua is going to appear. Give your life to him today and your heart. Shalom.